When people um, lose their hearing, they usually lose the high frequencies first. And that is that high frequency hearing that they need to understand some of the formants of speech to have speech understanding. You have hearing, you can hear that people are talking, you can hear some sounds, particularly the lower sounds, so the low tones like vowel sounds and male voices, you hear people talking. But the high pitches are missing, so children's voices, consonant sounds, women's voices, the parts that actually divide words up into meaningful parts. The people that have had this kind of hearing loss and struggle, some of them have been struggling for 20 years with these kinds of problems. In the past, they didn't view themselves as cochlear implant candidates. They had enough residual hearing that they could function, you know, one-on-one -on -one pretty well. But once they got into real-world environments, into their work environment, their social environments, they would, they would fail. Hearing aids only amplify sound, and so they make things louder, like they turn up the volume. Whereas people that have high-frequency hearing loss and have distorted word information, they don't get any improvement. The combination of using your natural hearing in the low frequencies and the cochlear implants for the high frequency information is very powerful because you can use what you ha everything that you have. They are starting to function like they haven't functioned for 20 years and it's just a dramatic change. Uh, we have uh, many people who are just ecstatic about what they're able to hear. They're able to hear their kids better. They're able to communicate in meetings better. They're, they're able to communicate with their spouse in a restaurant. They feel like they don't have to work as hard to hear. They don't have to work as hard to understand. They can use that energy to do other things like uh, participate in their relationships. They're not taking themselves out of conversations. They're not withdrawing from relationships. They feel like they're a more active participant in, where, in their life. I've been in the cochlear implant business a long, long time, and I've seen many, many successes. As caregivers, you know, we, we spend our days identifying a problem and trying to find a solution to it. And this was a problem that we didn't really have a great solution for. And now it just gives us great pleasure to be able to offer this to a patient. For a long time, there have been people who have been in the gap, where they're struggling. Um, hearing needs help, but they're not providing everything that they need. Um, they're not a candidate for a traditional cochlear implant based on our current criteria, but they're sort of stuck in the middle. Um, this provides us an opportunity to allow them to hear, allow them to listen, allow them to communicate with their families. And our patients who've had this uh, device, they've been very, very happy. Now we have something to say, hey, look, we hear you're struggling, you're not doing well, but we have something that can help now.